So welcome to Genesis. Uh, this is for the Buff Film Festival 2015. I am your host for this evening's premiere of Laps of Honor. My name is Ramal London. So are you guys ready to see an incredible film straight out of the UK? Pregnant. Raz, what? I'm gonna take care of you. I'm gonna take care of all three of us. I've got an interview for Birmingham University next week. How are you gonna cope? You didn't think about that when you were flinging your legs open, did you? I've been working on my MC. I know you're talented, but I couldn't stand it. You're waking up in the morning and not even be able to feed the kid. You should speak to Reza. I just want to be a good dad. I want to make money. I want to make serious money. You're not getting one dinking penny from me. Having a baby. I don't care. I'm not ready. I don't trust you. I don't trust anyone. You're a liar. You don't leave the crew, you know. The crew leave you, rude boy. Here, I used to go into a fight with the Moss crew. I told you. Them is no good. You stay away from them. It's your brain. It's your life, mate. The girl's pregnant. You need to be acting like a man. I am a man. More of a man than you are, anyway. I can provide for my girl, mate. I'm a baby. Yeah! Got it, on you? She's gonna give up. What are these top rappers and that? Do you think you can just decide not to go on stage? Just rise above it and stop worrying about everything else. You mess up the things. You talk. I'll kill you. themes that you wanted to get across in Laps of Honour? So, Laps of Honour is a very personal story to me. It's based on a true story. Oh, wow, OK. Of someone very dear to me. And I had to tell this story. And so, it's not 100% um, like what exactly happened. His character's sort of like an amalgamation of other people that I know. But I wanted to get across that even though he got involved in that lifestyle and made those choices, he he wasn't a bad person. Of course, and that was very clear in the movie as well. We see Eve go through so many trials and tribulations, and of course, like the, I think the biggest thing for her is fighting against wanting to be this ambitious big star, but everything seems to knock her down. So. You've been through a lot in your artistry. How is it playing a character? It, it must have felt like it was going backwards because you've been there, but now you've done so well. So how was that be, that kind of character development for you? Um, it was quite hard to get into the character because it was like the first film that I acted in since one day. Oh, yes. So it was very hard to get just jump back into acting again from doing music for so long. But I got into the hang of things. And, um, <laughs> And it kind of just um, reminded me of my life anyway, just trying to make it kind of thing. So it was good. And uh, with the help of Raina as well, she always got me into character. Yeah, before. We, and you know that scene where I get slapped up in the face? We had to do that at least 30 times. So oh imagine all the like big slaps. And yeah, she was just amazing for that, just getting me like, in the zone and stuff. You had to play so many different roles. You was the loving boyfriend. You were the, the really ambitious guy who wants to, you know, do everything for everyone. Be everyone's best friend. But how was it really just breaking down Tom? Um, to be honest with you, I based it on, on people I grew up with, to be fair. I um, based a lot of it on my brother, the older brother. Um, I've seen sort of, not necessarily the same thing, to be fair. It's, it's a lot different, but a lot of the similarities that the characters of Tom that I played, it's, it's similar to my older brother for now. So it's, a lot of it come from him, but a lot of it as well, to be fair, was, was based on people that have been around. Again, like I said, it's not been the same exactly as that. Exactly the but same. Elements, Thank God. Yeah, <laughs> elements of it was taken from people that have been around and, and, and things like that. I mean, there was, a lot of, there was a lot of drama in there as well. So going back to you, Raina, how was it directing so many really, really, like, shocking scenes like that? Just, I love drama. I'm an actress myself, so um, I had just finished the movie and I was watching the director very closely and I learned a lot from her and I just everyone so most of the cast hadn't acted before but everyone had a natural talent so I encouraged them to use that and I would just say rehearse and do your thing right and then they would do it and then with 
made some tweaks and pretty much I credit to the cast. Definitely, yeah. definitely. I mean, the on-screen chemistry between everyone was great. I mean, obviously the the relationship also with the shop shop uh, related. <laughs> oh, oh, fair enough. <laughs> but like exactly. you know. With Leisha in the salon, you know, just feel, it just seemed really organic. And even the mum scene. Oh my gosh, let's go over to mum. How was it being the evil mum? How was that? I mean, to, to, to just be from the get go. We were like, not even a, you're right, darling, how's your morning? Like, just straight up, like, why are you in my room? Why are you in my house? <laughs> you're not like that, are you? Oh, no. <laughs> good, good. Not at all. Um, to be like that is completely different for me. It was, I tell you what, it was liberating. Okay. It was liberating to be a nasty, nasty woman in the world. Because usually you're very nice and polite and things like that. And then obviously when my family saw it, they just looked at me and was like, what? <laughs> That's not our role, did you? Never. And I thought, yeah, it's free. I mean, was the accent change any anything that you had to work on, or...? No, that's actually just my normal accent. Okay. My voice just sounds really higher Because it was quite a while ago we'd done it. It was yeah. like a good three years ago, right? Yeah, because so, your voice has changed quite a lot. Yeah. And yeah. honestly, I'm on fleek now. I look <laughs> busted. <in. laughs> no, no one can like, look busted in this film. Um, my glow up challenge has arrived, so... Uh, it, we understood it was a character. That's yeah, fine, that's yeah, fine. Yeah. We she wasn't allowed much makeup. Nah, yeah, Eve don't live like that. Or to relax her hair. Oh, yeah. yeah the hair not good, though. Even though, you know, you know the edges, but, yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, kind of, kind of a little extra creamy crap. But, you know, you look good. I like it. Being natural. You're a good natural girl. But you do the fleek very well as well. Yeah, I like to put on weight as well. I've got, like, proper, like, chubby in there. Like, my face looks like hamster pouches. No, you just, I think... <laughs> You, you suited the role perfectly though. You looked cute, you looked young, you looked, you know, you looked... What, I don't you, look young now? Yeah, of course you don't look young now. <laughs> you, you don't know what I mean, innit? Yeah. You know, you had that, you know, the cute little chubbiness and like... Chubby cheeks. Yeah! Because it's what I know and it's where I grew up. Um, so, as I was saying before, the story is quite personal to me. I felt... So in real life, my friend who I lost, DB, those initials stand for, he's called Delroy Barnes, I know he's looking down. So he, um, I felt like I can't do any other films until I've told his story. And when we were working with other producers, um, they always wanted to set it in London because of the success of kiddlehood and adulthood. Yeah. So they were like, Manchester, why do we want to go up there? Why don't we riding on the success of these London films. But I was adamant, like, I want it set in Manchester because we haven't yeah. had any films from there. But we have so much talent there and we have stories to tell yeah. as well. So, do you think it reflects the bad side and, but you know, positivity in, in Manchester? Do you know what? When I grew up myself, I'm from Fallowfield, which is next to, which is next to my side. Okay. When I grew up, when I grew up, I, it wasn't too bad to be fair. I grew up when it's been alright, but I know that, for example, my brother, yeah. when he was sort of he's a bit older than me, it was similar to the to the story portrayed. And, and again, not necessarily myself, myself, but people uh, who are no one who related to, they have sort of experienced not obviously the exact same as that, but similarities definitely. And I think it's good that we captured it with the film. Um, it's a good reflection of what has been. It's not necessarily the case now, mm -hmm. uh, but it, it, it has been previously. So I think it's a good good reflection to be fair. Okay, and Brina, was that set in a, any particular time? Is it current? Yeah. It is current, <laughs> okay. Because obviously it's an adaptation of a real true yeah. story. So I, did you plan on it being 2015? Or, well, it wasn't filmed in 2015, but... I've actually been writing, I had been writing this for 10 years. No, okay, did not expect that. Yeah. <laughs> and when and it had changed hands with different producers mm -hmm. and we had tried why don't we set it in the 80s when manchester was really mm. prolific for gang wars why don't we keep it in the modern day and then i think at the end of the day i just we just i mean we filmed this now in 2012 so 
when I was working at the house, just thought it's in this present day. Yeah. No, I think it suited the times because, you know, everyone now has the ambitions of going to uni. You know, there's so many young young women who are very, very determined to make it as artists as well. So it feels right. It's very relevant. And the fact that you started it 10 years ago and it still has relevance now, that's that's brilliant. It shows shows how, how timeless the story is. So that's really So I knew I wanted Louis Emmerich to play Bruce the dad, Tom's dad. I knew that I wanted Gary MacDonald to play Razor, and that was pretty much it. I knew, so I knew that I wanted Eve to be able to, was it rap? Rap. rap. <laughs> <laughs> and I was thinking, how m I know so many amazing actresses, but I just knew, I just saw how I wanted Eve to be. And then, do you know SBTV? So I was watching that on YouTube and she, I saw Leisha did an F64 and I had to close the laptop to wow. take it in. And I was like, that is Eve. This is exactly, because in the F64 she was acting as well. And I just went, that is the perfect girl. How do I get in contact with her? So I was like Googling, Googling, Googling. And then I wrote to her manager, to her, to her email, to her this, to that. And I was like, she going to, I was like looking into the laptop, you will say yes. <laughs> and I was like, she can't say no because I'll find her and make this <laughs> So that was good. And then everyone else, we auditioned. Oh yeah, and I didn't audition by the way, Wayne, I remember. I was walking didn't past her, you? you ran out your head. <laughs> <laughs> you, come here, boy. Come here. This was my first time in the movie. Yeah. I always want a part in your movie, but you never come along until old age. I thought it was easy to do, but even though I was a bouncer in the movie, when they had me do it over and over, <laughs> until I well, it's almost right. And I give Rena thanks to bring me in it. I knew Tom from uh, being a little boy. We used to do like work, he used to come to my workshops. And I had another actor in mind, and he was like, what is this film that you're doing? I don't know. And I was so upset that this actor didn't. And then Tom came to mine and I had him for the character of Marios and then oh, he wow. read for Marios. Mm -hmm. And then I was with my friend Joanna, wherever she is. And then Joanna, we looked at each other and went, that's Tom. <laughs> and we said, Tom, do you mind reading this script? And he read it and I was like, oh my gosh, it just all The message I wanted to portray was that this particular character had a good heart it started from his family and his upbringing. It was broken and he didn't have a good foundation. And because he had a naturally good heart, all he wanted to do was provide and not make that same mistake. And I think sometimes the foundations, like childhood, like when you're raising a child, those foundations are very, very important for what the adults to become. Because sometimes it's about them trying to find a group to belong to or just being pressurized into it, like there's a lot of bullying. And some, you know, sometimes, I mean, I wonder what his mum, was she noticing anything? And sometimes some parents just turn a blind eye or, you know, they're not taking that much of an interest. I think, for me, I think the problems, most of the problems start with family and then pressures because you have bombarded with so many messages, like everyone wants this and you want that and you feel inadequate because you're like, why don't I have that? And this guy's driving around in a car and he's only 18 and I want that. And it's just all this pressures. And if someone comes to you and they're like, look, if you take this package to that man, I'll hand you a hundred quid. And it's like a temptation. But I think it's, for me, the family and education. I think if you teach kids from a very early age about respect and responsibilities and um, show them how to deal with certain things like, you know, 
have to get on in life and help other people. Um, we had a massive community, the whole street used to look out for everybody. And that worked really, really well back in the day. And I've noticed nowadays that nobody really talks to each other. And I think that's one of the pitfalls for young people. Because you know that if you were out when you were younger, you know, Mrs. Brown down the road, and she catch you, she's going to tell you, Mum. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you don't do it. But now, kids are getting, kids can get away with it because nobody's, you know, trying to stop them and things like that. It's a shame. But um, I think we're doing a bit better now with community and schools and things like that. They seem to be taking more of an involvement, you know, getting parents more involved, doing networking with the parents, so websites and things like that. We can log on to school websites and things like that to help. Yeah, I just wanted to say, um, on behalf of the British Urban Film Festival, Raina, um, it's been my honour to premiere this film, so many congratulations. It's been an incredible night, incredible film, incredible cast, and I just wanted to touch on the end of what you just said as well. Like, I think one of the main, one of the main messages and themes for me that kind of touched and touched me was the the friendships, the relationships. Like, you know, Dean was there for Tom and said, "Look, you can use my car if you want," or you know, I think you, I don't think you should be doing this, or oh, how about you go to uni like I'm going? Like, sometimes you've got to have that one friend that tells you that important message that like you might just brush it off but having a really good friend is is really key and you know know who your friends are know who you surround yourself with because you know your friends can get you in trouble or they can help you get out of trouble don't know about your friend she was a mess but, <laughs> but you know friendship is 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 you know a key message that i really really enjoyed in in, in the movie so so can i can i i need to get this out otherwise i'll just yes we're amongst witnesses here. Can I say that Tom, Lady Alicia, you have long acting careers ahead of you. Yeah. You do. Yeah. What one thing do you want people to think when they see it? Uh, me personally, like touching what Raina said before, I want them to remember Manchester to be fair. It doesn't really matter what the message is, but just get Manchester a bit more open. <laughs> <laughs> That's close to from any 021061. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just it's just good to it's refreshing actually to be in a film that's not like a London film for me, and still be able to keep my accent because whenever I want to be in other films, they're like, "Can you do a London accent?" I'm like, "Why? That's not what I do." So, thank you, Raina, for just keeping it real and and doing it in Manchester. <laughs> From this film, I'd like you all to remember that whatever your dream is, just keep going for it, even if it's not happening at the moment. And because um, sometimes the way that other people do it might not be the way you're supposed to do it. So if you have to climb over a wall, go and dig a tunnel, do it. But if you have a dream, just keep going for it. It happens. I would say the accent is amazing. I think it's one of the best accents on the planet. And, um, <laughs> and also, just uh, what Raina was saying about a dream, you know, sometimes we feel like our dreams are never going to be met. And it's very difficult at times. And I would say keep going, because I started acting class at the age of, um, oh, yeah. Wow. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So just keep going and don't ever give up until you hit the grave. <laughs> um, what I'd like to take from this film is that Manchester's here and we're proud. Uh, I'd just like to thank uh, Rena for putting together like a great production. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think for me it kind of shows you that with hard work determination you can see what's possible and what, you know, uh, you know, a collective team of people can achieve. Uh, also, with you know what Alicia's doing in her personal career as well, you can see what the hard work and determination can do. So it kind of just goes for all of us. I think the, the book kind of lies with all of us to kind of think, well, okay, if there's something that we want to do, uh, then you know, put your heart and your mind to it, and you know, it's possible.
just want to thank Trainer to bring M15 to London to show people that Manchester got loads of talents. I want to just take it around to different festivals so that people can see my work and see what I can do and so I can meet other filmmakers because I didn't know any other filmmakers when I was doing this, I don't think. So I just kind of want to get my work out there. And then just do not a, convent, not a traditional type of distribution where it's just cinema, but sort of think about who the audience would be for this film. And for example, like social media plays a lot and people sort of like, when you're scrolling through your Facebook feed, don't really read everything, you just kind of scroll through it. So it's about catching attention of the audience. So just thinking about things like that. But for now, festivals and then talking with a small distributor. Hi, my name is Raina Campbell, and we have just watched the premiere of my movie Lapse of Honor here at the Genesis Cinema in Whitechapel as part of the British Urban Film Festival, which is an amazing festival. Um, so we had a full house and I think the audience loved the film because they laughed and cried in all the right places. I feel relieved now, I was very nervous while I was watching the film, um, anticipating what the audience's reaction would be. But um, yeah, everyone's happy and congratulating me, so I think that's a good thing. Hey, I'm Mel London. I was the host of the premiere of Laps of Honour tonight for the Buff Film Festival 2015 and absolutely loved Laps of Honour. It was really good to see Lady Leisha back on the screen acting. Aside from all her musical talent, she's a brilliant actress. So it was really good to see uh, the story come to life. It was really about ambition, friendship and the struggles of life in, in the UK. People don't always know what's going on, especially outside of London. So that was really good to see and congratulations to Raina Campbell who's absolutely done a brilliant job and of course thank you Buff for having us. Um, my name's Shaquille, I played Marios. Um, my involvement was obviously playing Marios. Um, it was a good film, I enjoyed it. Obviously I thank Raina for uh, getting me involved. Um, obviously I love all the cast. It was a good, it was just a good project in general. Um, I've, I've, it's been a privilege. It's been a privilege to be a part of this film, only because I've never really properly acted, and this is like my first lead role in a movie that's getting screened. So it's been a pleasure to be involved. I've learned a lot from being involved in it, and Raina Campbell, she's an amazing director, amazing writer, amazing actress. It's just been great to actually be able to work with her as well and get tips off her and advice.